You wake up every morning, turn off your alarm, remove your blanket, brush your teeth with a toothbrush, take a shower using soap, hopefully, and then change into fresh clothes. Then you eat your breakfast, grab your backpack and shoes, and head out for school or work. So what do all these events have in common? They all involve plastic. Don't believe me? Let's recap. Your alarm clock, plastic. Phone, plastic. Your blanket, plastic. Toothbrush, plastic. Soap, plastic. Your clothes, plastic. Breakfast, the packaging is plastic. And your backpack and shoes, plastic. Materials that were most widely used during various time periods in history played a large role on the quality of life of the people during them, like iron during the Iron Age or stone during the Stone Age. Today, we are in the plastic age. We are addicted to plastics, whether we like it or not. The harsh reality is that almost every aspect of our lives involves plastics in some way, from the blankets we sleep in to the clothes on our own backs. They all contain plastic. And we've grown so oblivious to our reliance on plastics. Last year, worldwide, we produced about 322 million metric tons of plastic. 9% was recycled. So what happens to the rest? Most of it ends up in our water sources. And here's something to consider. Almost every bit of plastic ever created still exists. Let's take plastic bottles, for example. We finish the water inside, and we toss them. There are millions of people like us that throw away their plastic bottles when they're done using them. These bottles then travel and go to a landfill, and during that process, some fall out. Then these bottles travel with the wind and eventually make their way into our lakes and oceans. But this isn't the only way that plastic enters our water sources. Microbeads, which are small plastic beads in our soaps are, that were meant to burst, sometimes do not. And these also end up in our lakes and oceans as well. Another thing are microplastics, which are small plastic beads and fibers in our clothing that saturate wastewater and laundry, and those eventually make our way into our oceans as well. Despite knowing about our plastic input, we still continue to go through our daily activities, not doing anything to minimize this input. And I bet all of you have at least one thought in your life. Oh, it's not a big deal if I don't recycle this one thing. But no, you not recycling that one extra thing does make a difference. Do you see that picture up there? That's a picture of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. For those of you who haven't heard of this, it's an area the size of Texas that's floating in the Pacific Ocean, except it's made up of garbage instead of land. Sometimes images like these and the issues that relate to them can seem far away from us. In Michigan, we don't live anywhere near the Pacific Ocean. And if asked, most of us would probably say that our lakes and rivers are pretty clean. But unfortunately, that is not the case. And it's a serious problem. The Earth is 70% water. Of that, 2.5% is fresh water. And of that, only 1% is usable for us humans from freshwater lakes and glaciers. We live, we live in Michigan and have the luxury of being surrounded by the Great Lakes. In fact, the Great Lakes supply 21% of the world's fresh water. Millions of people in the United States and Canada rely on the Great Lakes for drinking water, jobs, and a way of life. That being said, all five of these lakes are dying. About 12 million pounds of plastic are dumped into Lake Michigan alone each year. That is equivalent to approximately 100 Olympic-sized swimming pools full of plastic bottles in just one year. But it's not just Lake Michigan receiving copious amounts of plastic. All of our Great Lakes are receiving large amounts of plastic. These lakes are well on their way to having garbage patches like the one we saw earlier. Now, 
The information I've presented so far may seem disheartening. It may seem like we have this really big problem with plastic pollution and there's nothing we can do about it. But luckily, there is action that is being taken. Nets and machines are being used to remove the solid plastic from the water and are thereby leaving waters cleaner. All right, problem solved, right? I guess I'm done talking to you today. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. We are left with an even bigger problem, polluted water. A few years ago, researchers found that after just one year of being in water, plastic is actually breaking down and releasing harmful chemicals into the water. Everyone believed that it took hundreds of years for plastic to break down, but now we see that harmful effects are happening after just one year. Now, this is a very problematic situation for many reasons, so let's dive deeper. The issue arises with the chemicals that are produced during plastic decomposition. The main category of pollutants are called endocrine disruptors. Now, endocrine disruptors are chemicals that alter and affect organisms' hormone levels. They can cause developmental disorders, birth defects, and cancer. For example, one thing they can do is cause male organisms to turn female, and vice versa. Pretty scary stuff. The main category of pollutants released from, of endocrine disruptors released from plastic decomposition is called bisphenol A, or more commonly known as BPA. BPA is very harmful, and if consumed in high enough concentrations, can have these harmful effects on us. But the thing is, I am not here today to ramble on about why plastic pollution is bad and why humans are the worst for making this happen. What's done is done. And I firmly believe that we need to focus on solutions. That being said, one solution that is shown to have much promise in this situation are called photocatalysts. Now, photocatalysts are essentially substances that alter the rate of a chemical reaction. So in our case, we make the chemical reaction go faster with the use of UV light or sunlight. One of the most popular photocatalysts that have shown to have potential are called TiO2 or titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is readily available, inexpensive, and chemically and mechanically stable. This means that it won't harm any of the living organisms in the water or the water itself. So titanium dioxide is very special. And when hit with UV light, energy from the light photon excites the electron from the titanium dioxide so much that it is removed. That was a lot. Let's recap. So this bundle of light and energy called a photon excites the electron, which is a particle with a negative charge, in the titanium dioxide so much that it is removed, and it leaves behind a hole. This hole, and you can see this above, the E represents the electron, and the H plus VB represents the hole that is left behind. This hole then undergoes a reaction with water, H2O, and oxygen, O2, to create something called an OH radical. Now, before you freak out, just stay with me. All an OH radical is, is an oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom bonded together with one less electron. And just like the titanium dioxide, the OH radical has some pretty cool properties. Since it's missing an electron, it can kind of go crazy sometimes, kind of like us humans when we're alone. Since this extra reactivity means that the OH radical can oxidize pollutants, and all oxidized means is that electrons are lost. And since electrons are lost, bonds are more susceptible to break. And when these, when these bonds break, pollutants are then broken down into harmless chemicals, harmless compounds. So let's recap everything from the beginning. We have these substances called photocatalysts that alter the rate of a chemical reaction by making it faster using sunlight. One in particular, titanium dioxide, has shown to have a lot of potential in this situation. It is safe and stable and readily available. So energy from the light photon excites the electron in the titanium dioxide so much that it is removed and it leaves behind this hole. This hole then undergoes a reaction with water and oxygen to create an OH radical. This radical then oxidizes the pollutant and then causes the pollutant to be chopped up into harmless inorganic compounds. See, this seems so complicated and scary at first but hopefully it all makes sense. It is amazing to see such great solutions like photocatalysts being used to combat our problems like plastic pollution in our freshwater. 
It's astounding to see what's happening in the world of science right now. But the thing is, if we hadn't consumed so much plastic in the first place and just thrown it away, we wouldn't even need to be pioneering such solutions like this. It is our actions of careless plastic consumption and careless waste that have caused us now and put our drinking water, critical to our survival, at risk. We need to take action. You need to take action. Recycle. No matter how basic it sounds, it is so, so important. 91% of plastic is not recycled. Divert single-use plastics from the waste stream. By recycling plastics, you're reducing the amount of new plastic in circulation, which thereby reduces the amount of plastic that would end up in our lakes and oceans. Another thing you can do is use biodegradable or bioplastics that decompose naturally over time. Or you could just reduce your use of plastics in general. Use glass jars and reusable bags instead of plastic jars and plastic bags. Be more alert and aware. Ask yourself, can I reuse this? Can I recycle this? Do I really need this? These changes might seem small, but together, I promise you, they are mighty. Our environment is at a critical turning point right now. The very ground we stand on, the air we breathe, the water we drink, everything is being threatened. It is not an option to ignore this. But not only is our environment being threatened, so is our whole human existence. Needed action is not being taken by people in power, and so it is up to us to do what is right. We got ourselves into this mess, and now it is our responsibility to get us out. Thank you.